Hello everybody, hope that you are doing very well and welcome back to another cryptocurrency technical analysis where in today's video I'm going to be going through the Bitcoin chart here for you all and explaining how I expect this to trade out going into the week to come which is obviously the halving for Bitcoin. A lot of people very bullish for this and positions expecting higher prices. I'm going to be explaining why I believe this is not the case and why I'm actually in a short position so <laughs> hope that you enjoy this one and yeah let's go into the charts here. So uh, what are we left with? I guess first I want to really highlight the importance always of, you know, at the end of the day, do not trade a bias, do not trade your beliefs, but just trade what the chart is telling you, okay? So the chart is always telling a story. You do not need to refer to outside sources, you know, news articles, etc, etc. You just need to concentrate on the chart and trade what the chart gives you, okay? That's the best way to succeed. Okay, so what is the chart telling us here? I guess locally, we obviously had the big sell-off obviously going into around it, the start of March, you know, heavily linked to the coronavirus, you know, worldwide spread. We're not going to deny that. But nevertheless, we saw that great, you know, decrease, sorry, in price. But from there, we obviously had our rise. We come back and we tested the 618 Fibonacci. And from there, it had been, you know, you know, going upwards. OK, so it's hard to deny that the local trend, local trend is up from here. OK, so we are looking at this as a local uptrend. And now we're running into some resistances. Obviously, this this round 9,500 uh, is where we've currently found resistance. Okay, and we're now we're like slightly pulling back. Okay, but what's the chart telling us? I would say that the chart here is telling you that people are buying the rumor and are we going to get a sell the news event? This is relating to the halvening. Okay, with a lot of hype around the halvening, people are generally bullish for this. How can we? How can I say people are generally bullish for this? There is evidence, obviously evidence to back it up. You can just look at the uh, futures market, which actually this week has started trading in contango. So the futures price is trading above, uh, which obviously highlights people into the future are expecting Bitcoin to trade at a higher price. A along with the fact you can just come along here and take a look at net longs, net shorts. And this is of the visible range of what the range that we're currently in. You can see longs increasing, 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 obviously slightly pulling back over the last 24 hours here. But they have been nevertheless in this range only increasing from the start of the range to where you are now, whereas shorts have been very, very mm, sideways. OK, so when you compare the difference between longs and shorts, shorts have not really increased so much. They have by about seven mil but okay longs on the other hand are up, up around nearly 50 mil so you can see a lot more aggressive longs here uh you know in the current range that we are in so that's leading you to believe that the majority are expecting higher prices here generally speaking okay especially with your technicals there as well as you know you have just people that don't trade technicals in bitcoin and are just buying because the halving sort of thing so are we going to get a, a, a sell the sell the um buy the rumor sell the news event obviously that will you know explain itself in a week to come but what am I looking at here? Okay, so there have been a few key areas for me. So this is now going to, I'm going to bring you up to the story of how we got here because it's important to know what you're happening right now, how you got here, okay? And it all occurred over the last sort of week or so. Um, some key levels that you ran into here. So obviously we did run into, this is the this is a channel on the daily time frame, by the way, taken from the high to the, to the next high. And as you can see, we did run up into that, that monthly being at around 9339, and the actual top there was 9500. Um, and at the top of that 9,500, you did actually have a lot of uh, confluence. Okay, so you were seeing divergences, top of channel monthly. Um, you were seeing trap traders, so that you just had a lot of confluence at this region to expect a pullback. And a pullback you did naturally get there. Okay, so then you were left after that pullback, and this was uh, lovely. I think most of you will have seen the video that I made, because uh, I put it on YouTube in the end, uh, of, of how we got this occurrence, because we obviously had a left shoulder ahead and then a right shoulder here. So I'll just quickly draw this out for you. You were left with this kind of pattern of a head and shoulders at the, t at the highs. And in the time, you know, you have your average traders looking at this and, and they naturally do trade off of these sort of patterns. And obviously, this is what I was looking at in the time, showing the pattern, but explaining, you know, you can just pause and read this, explaining why I was still expecting this to be a fake out. And, uh, you know, looking, you know, my theory was that we were going to get this head and shoulders, the fake out of the head and shoulders and then increase in price. And again, that is actually what you've done there, where you got that head and shoulders. And we moved up all the way to 9,150. Um, 9,150 was obviously, for well, personally for me, a really, really key level. So this is the one that I was giving in the trading updates, okay? So I was looking at 9,150. This was a trading update from Friday, by the way. So I was expecting a slow weekend. And I was wanting to see, anyway, a push to the 9,150 region, which, in my opinion... 
uh, if you were going to get a rejection, which we got, was a, a good swing short, okay? So that's kind of my, that brings you up to where we are now. I am currently positioned in a short position, but my first, my I'm still holding my original short, by the way, but uh, nevertheless, what we had there was the move from around 9,500-ish down to the lows of the, this current channel that I'm trading. So that's how we got the highs, the monthly and the top of the overall channel, okay? So the the overall channel there and uh, that brought you down to the lows which was a fake out with this head and shoulders fake out of the head and shoulders brought you back up to what in my opinion was a really key level of 9150 from 9,150, we did reject. You can see the rejection come back up. The high then of this candle, 9,143, before bringing you back down to the middle of the channel and now back at the channel lows. So that's brought you up to where we are now. I hope that you enjoyed me talking you through that theory because that's absolutely lovely trading. So then what, what are we looking at now? So if we are range bound, okay, this is obviously a deviation, okay, and this is another deviation. This is a deviation here. So if we are expecting a range bound trade, then ultimately we are expecting this to rotate from the lows, but now ultimately back up to the highs. So is there any reason at the moment to be uh, still leaning uh, bearish on the short term here? Obviously, we can have a midterm picture, we can have a short term picture. And in the short term picture for me, it is what, what one would expect a rotation at least to challenge these highs once more. OK, ultimately remaining range bound. OK, so another rotation from the lows here up to the highs. OK. And this is obviously just looking at a standard uh, market. As you know, the market generally ranges more than it expands. So one would expect naturally here, you do have the potential as well with some trap shorts at the lows for another push to the upside. And uh, again, day trading versus swing traders perspective. From a day traders perspective, you cannot be short in these lows. The risk to reward is absolutely awful. So you are left with only two options today as it stands currently to sit out of the market and not trade, okay, or to trade a long position because opening shorts at the bottom of the range is a really bad idea, okay. Where do you want to open shorts? You want to open shorts at high time frame resistances. You want to open shorts again on, on midterm, sort of lo lower term time frame. But nevertheless, that 9150-200 was a resistance reading you rejected. So these are good shorts. Is, <laughs> is this a good short? Absolutely not. Even though my opinion is bearish on the midterm and I do believe we could get a very quick move to the downside still this is a bad time to open a short okay you need to wait for some bigger rejections or obviously an increase in price to try and get a higher entry okay so um that's kind of how i'm viewing this on the short term you, the only option is really long again this is not financial advice don't take this as financial advice do your own research this is for educational purposes but in my opinion i personally wouldn't be shorting at these lows i feel it's an awful short uh the only thing you can be doing is looking for longs here Okay, again, you do have some uh, trapped traps traders down at these lows. You can see the traps. Okay, so you do have the definitely the potential as well to to push up from here. Okay, you can see here like crazy amounts, like 10 million sold at the lows, 10 million. There's another 4 million, 5 million. You know, there's a lot of trap traders down at those lows. So naturally, one would expect there's there's definitely the potential here to get another push to the upside. Does this end in another lower high? I guess if you want to uh, visualize something here, then you could say, okay, if we break bullish from this trend line, again, this is not any far from a perfect symmetrical triangle, but are you uh, going to expect this rotation back up to here? Okay, and then are you looking for the push out? If you gain acceptance from that, obviously, I think you're going like 9,600. But obviously, if you come down from there, then I really think your first, first region, uh, 8,300, to be honest. So, um, yeah, that's how I'm looking at the charts. My 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 bias, personal bias for the halving is that it's a it's a sell the news event. I, I do not see the day of the halving is going to give a massive increase in price. Personally, I can't see that happening. I, I lean bearish for this. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm only trading the charts. I am not trading that bias, so to speak. I guess I'm in a short position, but I'm 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 happy to you know, and re-enter into a long uh, for a swing traders perspective. Uh, if I guess really, if we if we come back above nine two hundred here, because uh, yeah, for me this is going to curl up a little bit before we get a bigger break. Are we expecting a breakdown at the moment? Not so much. We have to expect this to uh, get another move back up to the range highs, because ultimately, you know, a range bound market here would be nice. Uh, but as I was uh, explaining to my members today, then you do have this local downtrend here. So whether we do come up to just the middle of the channel, so you know, for example, before heading back down. Again, that's a possibility. So really locally, then you're looking at 8,800 resistance, okay, back up to 9Ks and your local support here is at around 8,550. So those are the key intraday levels. Um, this was an absolutely lovely, just look how perfect this was, by the way. So have some like, yeah, 
obviously all started off with your 618s. Just 618s are perfect, aren't they? Look at that from low to high. You hit the 618, 618, 618, 618, 618, 618, 618, 618, 618, 618, curling up. Come back up to your 9150. Absolutely perfect. On the 1.618 Fibonacci time extension. Madre mia. It's so nice. And then obviously you reject their batch of the range low. So I mean... There's, it's just impossible to deny right here. This, honestly, I have to say, this right here, this screen that you have right here is just perfection in terms of technical analysis. And this doesn't mean blowing my own horn. This is just saying that's perfection in terms of technical analysis. To be able to see the reactions off these 618, 618, just like that, to give you a bearish Gartley harmonic. This is a bearish Gartley. And then for that bearish Gartley to play out, to come that back down to the range lows, it's, it's just so nice technical analysis. And this is what I refer to. You don't need any outside sources. You don't need any news articles. If you just trade the chart, you can literally make so much money because obviously got in at the highs for a short, got in at the longs for a low, and then called this second peak for the high. I mean, that was just just crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll end with a few bit of news articles. Obviously, uh, over at the chart champions, we are now we have now started the 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 Bitcoin trading challenge. Funnily enough, this was the post back from the uh, 30th, so that would have been what Friday, I think, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, and um. <clears throat> We had people shorting 9,400, 9,100, 9,000. We obviously moved down to 8,400. This guy's first ever trade on BitMEX, shorts 9K, you get a move down to 8,400. What a first trade. That's absolutely insane. And uh, yeah, obviously, <laughs> shout out for this car that I bought, which uh, has the Bitcoin number plate. That was... Uh, pretty funny indeed and i'm getting a, a little logo on this yeah it's pretty nice but <laughs> uh yeah that's that goes to show you like what you can get from trading bitcoin literally bitcoin uh, absolutely insane volatility and a bit, a bit of a funny one that i put in here and may shorten it back down so far that that short's looking pretty nice indeed isn't it so um yeah i'm not getting overly excited by it because at the end of the day i have to say final words the trend locally is up here okay so let's just hide all that the trend locally is up so whether this is still another high higher low and we do push on up again here that's definitely a possibility because of the fact this trend is up okay so i'm not gonna necessarily become too aggressive on a short until I see a bit more weakness. I'm just uh, leaning into the bearish side, but I want to see more weakness before I add size onto my trade, you know? Uh, so that's my perspective. That's the technical analysis for today. That's how I am trading at the moment. But on locally, I am expecting another rotation to the upside, but midterm, I'm at, you know, what I kind of would like to see this as a high. Uh, but for me to add size onto my trade, I want to get uh, a bit more of a weakness on the chart, a bit more of a breakdown to occur. Or again, I'll be looking for a push up. Well, yeah, look, 8,000, 9,600, 10K, absolutely possible uh, until we really see some weakness of a breakdown here if you want to learn about this website okay so if you want to learn about this website everything how i trade okay as well as all the updates that i gave um you know over the last especially this, this obviously all comes out to the group first everything that i do always on the group first then um you know chartchampions.com then you can come over sign up and educate yourself learn and you know make some money trading so um yeah if that interests you, I'll see you over in the members area. And uh, yeah, have a brilliant day trading. Have a great week ahead. Remember the weekly chart. We have just had seven weeks in a row. But yeah, just remember that seven weeks in a row is pretty insane. Are we going to get an eighth here before a pullback? Time will tell. We're only on Monday. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I am locally looking for another rotation to the upside here. So hope that this video has been helpful. Thank you once again, everybody. Cheers and have a brilliant day. Thanks. Bye.